Nifty Access, Build Query Heads. Unusual title, but uh, that was the original question and it, it just sort of fits really. Here's a bit about me. As I'm on LinkedIn, you can email me and I have a website, Nifty Access. In this video, which is an answer to a question on Access World Forums, I'm going to demonstrate normalization and then I'm going to demonstrate a tool to help you with the normalization process. That might be in the next video. I'm not sure. It depends how quickly I get through this one. That was the original question. The OP, as the original poster, wanted a format from data on the left to be formatted like the data on the right. Now there's one small problem with it, is that those two bits aren't part of the data, and that led me to a bit of confusion, and I was struggling working this out. Uh, basically, when you're normalizing stuff imported to access from Excel, it's often a case of dividing it up into three different separate tables from the original data. And I couldn't work out how to do that. And Minty did. And that's his bit here below. So thanks, Minty, because I was struggling to sort that out. So what's happened? What's, what is normalization all about? Here we have the expenses across the top in fields. Now you could do it like that, but the problem is straight away you've only got a limited number of fields available in MS Access. So that's a limitation on that. That's just showing those expense items have been moved into their own table like that. Next we've got the company names. These are the short codes for the company names and they're under each of the expenses. So we can move those, find those and move them into a table like this, like that company's table there on the left. How do we put it back together? Well, we have another table, which if you read that, it's company expenses. It means the company and expenses tables joined together. And that field on the left, which is company expenses ID, is a unique field for each row. Technically, you don't need that because the individual columns the company ID and the expenses ID can give you the information you want. But I always use an ID field. It does make things easier in some stages of your database development. The company ID is taken from the company's table and the expenses ID is taken from the expenses table and they're married up together like that. And they reproduce the original data. As you can see, the basic salary for company XE, so you've got company ID 1 which is company XE and you've got expenses ID 1 which is basic salary it's uh, shown in the expenses table as basic and then uh, there's another example that's company shortcode FZ and it's company number 2 so you got 2 and the meals in the expenses table is item number 4 and we do another one company JW company 4 and expenses item number 2 one of the major advantages of this Besides giving you unlimited number of companies, unlimited number of expenses, can, can you see how much less data there is? Because you're only recording the ID of the company and the ID of expenses in that company expenses table. And in the two original tables, you've got a unique value for the company and a unique value for the expense. So you only have one entry, one set of text. Uh, there's loads of advantages. Uh, spelling mistakes are eliminated. Uh, if you want to update a spelling, if you've spelt one wrong, you globally rename. Actually, basic is a good idea. You could easily update that to basic salary and it would propagate right through your database. Also, in the original data, you've got some empty fields and you're storing those. Again, this method avoids having any empty data. You just don't have a row representing an empty data field. In the next video, I'll show how to turn this data into the company expenses table, and uh, then we'll go from there. Thank you.